I remember being in, um, in uh, Bangladesh and walking down this little road. There was no lights. It was completely dark. I used a cell phone light and, and I started hearing this faint noise in the middle of like seemingly nowhere. I was like, it sounds kind of familiar. And I got closer and closer and closer. And I hear this family singing, How Great Thou Art, in their language. Wow in the middle of just a random house while I was on my way to a crusade <laughs> and I'm sitting here going, there are people everywhere. This country was 98% unreached. God redeems people and he loves you. And can I tell you today, he has a plan for your life. Even right now at this time and in this season, you might not see it. You might not be able to find it, but can I tell you, it is written before it was before you were ever born. It was written that God had a plan for you before you were born. He ordained the steps you were going to take. He loves you so much and he sent Jesus to this world to come and save you. He does not condemn you today. He loves you so much. And can I tell you, friends, that is the message we are sharing today. Now, I have a very special guest in the studio today. He's pastoring right here in the state of Florida where I am from, Pastor Gary Howells. Good to see you. Good to see you, Caleb. Thanks for joining today. Amen. Thank you for the invitation. Well, you had to journey a long way to get here all across the world, right? <laughs> a whole 25 minutes. 25 minutes. Well, it's nice having uh, amazing moves of God right here in our backyard Absolutely, here in Florida. Absolutely, yes. Love it. And um, right now you're pastoring in this season, right? Yeah, I'm pastoring Glad Tidings Church in uh, West Orlando area. The city is Okoe, Florida. Okay. And you guys have multi uh, different campuses, right? All across? Yes. Prior pandemic, we had four campuses. And uh, so we've streamlined things during this time. And uh, we still have three campuses. We launched another campus online campus and it's going well and God is moving and ministering as only he can do. Seems like you guys were prepared for how the world was going to change, getting ready with the online streaming. and Absolutely. We have an amazing team. And uh, literally in one week, the world changed and our world changed. I was in uh, Jamaica at our orphanage whenever the pandemic began to, to break out. And I got back on a Wednesday evening. And then on Thursday, they're shutting everything down. So our team really went to action and we were able to, to move things uh, online strictly for a season and then uh, to prepare for uh, relaunching the in-person. Now, as you've been pastoring in this, I can imagine you've seen every emotion that is possible from people that are going through hard times. Others, maybe it, they haven't missed a beat and the Lord's really flourishing them in this time. But um, what would you say to people today that are in this season and they haven't found the hope that they need? Well, I think the most important thing is to realize that our hope is found in Christ Jesus. Circumstances around us are going to change, but he is the unchanging one. And uh, you are right, Caleb. A lot of people are having fear, anxiety, worry that is off the chart. And the Word of God tells us to be anxious for nothing but to pray about everything. And I think this is a very important time, a season in our life to really practice the spiritual disciplines of prayer, of study, meditation. And, uh, and the church, the family of God is so important during this season. Yeah. Amen. We, we definitely need each other. Yes. And I love as I travel, you get to see the army of the, of the Lord all around the Absolutely. world. There's pockets of believers. I remember being in, um, in uh, Bangladesh and walking down this little road. There was no lights. It was completely dark. I used a cell phone light and um, there was like one or two houses that kind of had like a light bulb you could kind of see, it, but it was just dark. And I started hearing this faint noise in the middle of like seemingly nowhere. And um, I hear some singing and I, I'm used to prayer calls in other countries from all the different religions right. that are out there. But I was like, it sounds kind of familiar. And I got closer and closer and closer. And I hear this family singing, how great thou art in their language. Wow in the middle of just a random house while I was on my way to a crusade. <laughs> and I'm sitting here going, there are people everywhere. This country was 98% unreached. And there's a family that's worshiping Jesus in the middle of this field. I mean, they're, they're everywhere out there. Hey, man, they? absolutely. And that's what's so encouraging as you travel and things like that. You realize that God 
God has people in every, every state, every county, every nation. And uh, there are Nehemiahs in the right place at the right moment. Just as that, as you were going to a crusade, that was no doubt just an encouragement to you yeah. to know that uh, that light is shining even the darkest places. Yeah, come on. And nothing can stop the light of Jesus Christ. Not even a pandemic, amen? Yeah. There are stories of just victory, stories of growth, stories of of how the Lord is providing uh, financially. And it's just, it's just incredible to see. On one hand, you have a lot of fear. On the other hand, there's a lot of faith being displayed. And uh, we know that faith moves mountains. Come on, it sure does. Amen. Um, let's go back a little bit to the beginning of, yeah. of Gary, the man, the kid, the teenager growing up. And yeah. let's talk about how you came to the Lord. Well, I grew up in a pastor's home. Uh, my dad was a Simmons of God pastor, as I am today. So I'm a PK. And uh, I'm fourth generation uh, Christian, fourth generation Assemblies of God. So I grew up going to church. I was the typical kid that, oh, do we have to go to church again? <laughs> we were just there yesterday. But uh, in that process, I encountered, I encountered Christ. Wow. Um, I encountered Christ at the altar many occasions. And seeing it lived out in my dad's life, my mom's life, uh, just really was just a powerful thing. And that's one of the... Uh, the great things that really is an anchor to me is remembering how faithful my parents were in hard times, difficult times, even though we didn't know it as kids being small. So I encountered Christ at a young age and uh, being in a spirit filled church uh, where the, the altar was always emphasized. You know, I cried my eyes out on many occasions. Amen. <laughs> uh, I, I jokingly say I probably got saved every Sunday night and evangelists came by. Yeah. Every revival that happened, I got <laughs> saved and, and filled with the Holy Spirit all over again. But uh, I wouldn't change that experience for, the, for anything. Wow, I love it. Now, in that, did you, you obviously, I guess like me, experienced the Lord in that way yes. as a teenager, as a kid, and it was real to you from that season, right? Absolutely. Very real for me from a, from a very early age. Probably around one, 12 or 13, I had probably a, what I would call just a real encounter with God. And then whenever I went to college, I knew I was called. I went to Southeastern University at that time, it was Southeastern Bible College. And uh, I really had to decide did I believe what I believe because the Word of God says it, or do I believe what I believe because my dad told me? Yeah. And I think it's an encounter with a lot of people. They have to come to realization we believe the Word of God because it is the Word of God. You're thankful for your experience, you're thankful for the upbringing, but you have to have an encounter for yourself. Now, there's so many religions and people that will watch this all around the world today that are watching right now, and they've grown up in all types of religious environments. I mean, right. you, you're required to do all types of things in so many different faiths, but I, I really love how you said there has to be a moment where it comes, becomes real to you. Absolutely. I mean, you can do things from rote memory, and you can quote things, and you can do whatever it yes. is that your religion is telling you to do today. And you're going to find yourself empty, even in our Christian backgrounds. You can do apply good principles, but exactly. the man, Christ Jesus, you know, he came to this earth, died on the cross. What, what is it like and why is it so important that people need to encounter Jesus, the, the individual, the person, right. uh, versus just experience religion? Well, because, you know, Jesus, the Word of God tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And uh, we emphasize a personal encounter with Christ. Jesus said, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Nicodemus, as he heard those words, he was confused and he was really confounded. How can a man be born again? And Jesus began to talk about how, how God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And it's really receiving the gift of God, his son, Jesus. What other God has given his son as a sacrifice for all? 
that died, but not only died, but yea, is risen from the dead. And now that same resurrection power can live in me uh, through a personal encounter with Christ. Yeah, I love that. Praise God. Now, you, you had said even uh, in these services, you've encountered, obviously, God, but then you encountered the person of the Holy Spirit as well Amen. and uh, had a lot of different moments with Him. Talk to me about encountering the Holy Spirit as well and why that has been so important for you, even in this season. Yes. Well, I think the, the encountering of the Holy Spirit is, is, is really the icing on the cake, so to speak. And um, encountering Holy Spirit really uh, takes me into the anointing and the power of God, the, the resurrection power of Christ, where the gifts of the Lord are released in my life. And um, as I have learned to pray in the Spirit, uh, pray in, in uh, as Paul said, pray in the Spirit and pray with the understanding. There is an anointing that is released and the gifts begin to operate. And especially today in the pandemic, we need to be a supernatural church. Yes. Paul described uh, the gifts of the Spirit. One description was the manifestations of the Spirit to manifest the Spirit of God. And we need the manifest Spirit of God in our life. Yeah. And this is where the encounter of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the whatever language you want to use is so important today. It will empower us with that dunamis, that, that power of God to be who God's called us to be. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that. Friends, if you're watching, you're going to have that opportunity to encounter Jesus today and also to receive the Holy Spirit. We believe that right where you are, no matter where you are, in your car, in your living room, on your computer, that the Holy Spirit will come right through that screen Amen. and He will just uh, He will hit you with the power of God right now and you're going to receive Him. I love hearing stories through television, through uh, podcasting, that people, when they experience the Holy Spirit, sometimes will just receive that power in their car while they're driving down the road, going to work or Amen. whatever it may be. And the Lord is, is, is wanting to touch you today. If you feel that pull today, if you feel that warmth and that heat in your body right now, that might be a sign that the Holy Spirit is tugging your heart and, and, and highlighting this message to you today. We're going to get to that in just a moment, but I want to talk to you about more present day now. You're, um, you uh, years ago started working in an orphanage as well, and yes. uh, ultimately have become the main support system yes. for this orphanage. I know you had to fight a little bit to, to keep that and to, to maintain that, but talk to me about that a little bit. That's a powerful part of your story. Yeah, so uh, I've been pastor at Glad Tidings for 22 years, and when we we came, it was a congregation of about six people. And uh, so it was a revitalization, a, a resurrection, if you would. And But from that time, that moment that God planted us there, I knew that we were going to be a church uh, that believed in missions. Um, the word that the Lord gave me was a mission powerhouse. Wow. So it's really just been just a part of our DNA. Uh, you fast forward about 14 years later, the year is 2015, so probably about 16 years later, we're doing different mission work all over the, the world. We began to pray, Lord, we want something that we can really be a lifetime project. An opportunity came for us to, to purchase an orphanage that was struggling, that was on the verge of closing down because of, of resources. and. So we just began to shake the tree. We just began to, Lord, what, what do you want? So we approached about purchasing, actually in 2013, but we sealed the deal in 2015. So we had the City of Refuge GT in uh, Content Gap, Jamaica. We have about 51 uh, children that we care for on 24 hour basis, seven days a week. We got about 34 employees there that we provide jobs to. And it's just a great, a great opportunity and uh, just to really change a nation. Yeah. Really change a nation. What would you say in the process of supporting these kids and teenagers, what, what is something you've learned in the process that maybe you uh, didn't know about before or that surprised you? Well, uh, these children come from very broken backgrounds, very hard and harsh 
uh, situations. Some of these kids will see things that that no nobody should ever have to see in their life. But what is so powerful is when they come into a safe environment. At first, they may be scared because it's unfamiliar. But as they begin to fear, feel the love, as their daily needs are provided, and then the gospel of Christ is given to them. It's wonderful to see the, the light that had gone out in them suddenly, slowly become more and more. Wow. And as they encounter Christ, uh, they begin to see that there's hope and that uh, they don't have to be a victim, but they can be a victor. Yeah. So that's a pretty powerful wow transformation that takes place. Yeah. And friends, he can do that with you. Absolutely. <laughs> I feel like you keep setting me up for this, like, you know, these great one liners to just talk to the people here today because, <laughs> because you're like, he can do it for you. He can set you up too, friends. He does love you. And he, Absolutely. he really, really, really has a plan for your life and he will make you blossom even in the hardship as well. He wants to restore all that the canker worm and locust has stolen for you today. He wants to redeem you, and that's what Jesus does. He doesn't condemn you. He loves you today. Um, I, I want to ask you about now present day with uh, pastoring in the pandemic as well. This is always a hot topic with our listeners. Uh, everybody, you know, wants to go to church. Some have been in churches that have never closed. Some have right. been that are online. Some, they haven't opened. They, they don't even have a church anymore, and they're just lost, and they might go, well, I don't need that anymore. I mean, there's people from every spectrum out there that are watching today and listening. Um, some, they, they see this as their church, watching a television right. program every single week. Um, what, what have you done in this season specifically at GT? I know you guys had your learning phase like everyone else, but, but what are you guys doing and how are you seeing the gospel affect the city? Well, um, the pandemic has been just something that has shaken all of us. And uh, like most churches in our area, when it first happened, we, uh, we really wanted to be you know, good citizens. We wanted to lead by example. And uh, so we uh, did our best to comply with some of the local uh, regulations. And we went strictly online uh, for a few weeks. And uh, it's been really amazing just to see how the Lord has used those things. In, in one realm, uh, you would think from a pastor standpoint, how in the world can we make it if you don't have people show up? But then our outreach became even more because of the, of the impact of social media, the impact of, of live streaming. But uh, as good as all those things are, we need the local church. The, we need the body of Christ. We need community. Um, my higher education is in counseling, mental health, and marriage and family. And one of the things that I began to become concerned with is the, uh, the impact it was having on the mental health and, uh, and the, the psyche of our, of our church people. So uh, really saying, we've got to get back. We've got to get back in person. So we began to uh, navigate those things and we began to, to uh, work towards getting back in person, all the while realizing that some needed a quarantine because of physical concerns and right. things like that. So helping people navigate, really, is this necessary for me because of high risk? Or is this now just become I'm out of the habit of attending church and it's yeah. more convenient for me to do things? So we've been really been uh, strategizing how to uh, encourage people uh, to really step out in faith, to use wisdom, to use understanding, to know uh, where God is, has planted you and really what God is doing in, your, in this season in your life. So we went back in person on Pentecost Sunday. We felt like that was a big day yeah. that we needed to be back in person. And then we uh, relaunched in person real hard on June the 1st. And we've not looked back and we've been just doing all the, all the time doing online. We call it a live studio audience to really encourage people that uh, we're one church. We're not, we're not a, a church that uh, people that are in person and people that are home. But now as we're coming over a year of the pandemic, what I am seeing that um, we really need people to realize the importance of the local body mm -hmm. and the importance of community. Forsake not the fellowship 
of yourselves together yeah. as the manner of some are. But realizing that God can move in every, every realm. Wow. You know, when we're in person or right there in the living room where you're at. Yeah. And helping families understand, is this really a concern or am I giving in to fear by staying home? And really pushing that to say, okay, I need, I need the body of Christ. I need that personal, that physical presence that is there. I love, I love your heart uh, as a pastor because you're processing it from the perspective of like, each individual, each situation, but yeah. taking people from where they are and elevating them to the next steps Amen. and wherever they are from the people that are like, hey, let's have revival right now. Yes. And others that are saying, I could never leave my house again, you know, absolutely. And, and, and to watch that process is beautiful. What have you seen as the result with the people in your strategy and how you've implemented it? Well, uh, as far as the church personally, we actually have seen growth during this time. We have we have seen the church just explode financially, also numerically, and uh, and then our ability to do to do outreach. One of the things, Caleb, I feel like the Lord really, really spoke to me personally for for our church is that we need to streamline the process. We needed to uh, increase our outreach, increase mm-hmm. increase our mission. So, on just about every Saturday for the last year, we teamed up with Farmers to Family, and uh, we've been doing weekly outreach, giving groceries to to families. We rented a six thousand square foot warehouse wow. before we had product to put in it. We actually started with buying a forklift. I had a forklift. I said, I need a warehouse now. And then the Lord opened a door for us to get a warehouse. Wow. And, uh, and I knew the Lord was going to help us fill it, but it didn't happen the first month. It didn't happen the second month. But about the third or fourth month in, today that warehouse is overflowing. I need a bigger warehouse. Wow. We've teamed up with an organization called City Serve. And uh, they have a heart to really help the local church and to uh, minister to families in need. So during this time, though it's been challenging, we've seen a lot of victories. Wow. And the Lord has just kind of kind of just given us, you know, being led by the Spirit during this time, what's specific for our church. So we streamlined some processes, reached out and uh, some other areas, and the Lord is just blessing, you know, all the while supporting an orphanage and having a school in Haiti and uh, and just missionaries all over just doing a great work. Wow. The Lord, man, he's really using you guys right now. I love it. Amen. Friends, he, he has a plan for your life today. And if you hear the encouragement and the growth and the joy in Pastor Gary's story and you want to experience that. If you want to experience the power of God as uh, so many have and as the miracle at the beginning of this program, you saw it right there as well. God wants to touch you today. If you want to give your life to Jesus, friends, just I just challenge you right now, wherever you are, close your eyes and just say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy upon me. I'm a sinner. I need you to save my soul. Today, I call you Lord. I call you Savior. I call you Healer. Deliver me today from the bondages of sin. I believe in you that you came to this earth, that you died upon a cross for my sins and rose from the dead in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer with me today, I just encourage you call that number on the screen. There is a team of people standing by to pray with you and to get excited with you, to believe with you and connect you into churches in this season. There's a massive team, no matter what country you're in, we have a place for you to connect and get plugged in because uh, as Pastor Gary said, we need the community right now, especially. Pastor Gary, would you just pray also for uh, the Holy Spirit as well for those listening? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you, Lord, because you are a very present God. You are here at this moment. And Lord, there may be those that are listening, that are walking through some very deep valleys, some very difficult times. And Lord, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit be released in their life. I pray, God, that the anointing of God will come upon them. And Lord, that hope would fill them. And Lord, the darkness around them will begin to dissipate. And the light of the gospel of Christ will begin to illuminate their path. And Lord, I pray. 
I pray, God, that the power and presence of the Holy Ghost, God, would fill them with a double portion of the Spirit of God. Much like Elisha said to Elijah, my request is I want a double portion. And Lord, I pray that there will be a release of the power and the Spirit and the anointing of God in their life. And Lord, that you will do only what you can do. And Father, I pray, I pray, Jesus, right now that you will encourage, that you would strengthen. Lord, those who are sick will be healed. God, those who are struggling with depression will be set free. That darkness, that cloud will begin to live and dissipate. And Lord, the hope of Jesus Christ would fill their heart, their mind, and their soul. I thank you, Holy Spirit. For you exalt Jesus. You exalt the Father. I thank you, Holy Spirit, because you empower believers for service. I thank you. You empower us to be your witnesses, to be, Father, who you've called us to be. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity. We thank you for this time, this Kairos moment, God, this appointed time. And this is our season for victory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen. Friends, if you are encouraged today, if the Lord has touched you, if you have received a healing or you just want to celebrate what God is doing, just call the number on the screen right there. We want to celebrate with you and hear your testimonies today. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to Awaken the Wonder. If you enjoyed today's show and want more ministry like this, please visit kingdomencounters.us where you can find weekly blogs in my latest book, Hunger. Be sure to subscribe and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at the tag Evangelist Caleb Wampler. If the Lord leads you to partner with us in the nations in prayer and giving, visit kingdomencounters.us. I'll see you next time.